What's up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, you have read the title correctly. Uh, a hog hunter was shot recently, and uh, it's just a, 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 a unfortunate situation, man. That's the only way I can explain it. Um, I'm just going to say this right now before we even start this. Uh, guys, I'm not doing this for views. I'm not doing this for uh, attention. I'm not doing this for followers, whatever. Uh, guys, I'm strictly using this for educational purposes because I have done a video about this uh, about two, three years ago. And um, it's it, it just seems like we need to be talking about it a little bit more. Uh, I've been in the game for quite some time. Uh, a lot of other people have been in the game as well for quite some time. And some people have just got into this within the last year. And one thing that we're not doing as a community, as a group of hog hunters and varmint hunters, night hunters, is that we're not talking more about safety. We're showing all the glory. We're showing the awesome gear. We're showing the weapons. We're showing the hogs getting dropped. We're showing the total chaos, but we're not showing what we're doing to be safe out there. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do with this video. All right, guys. So the uh, incident happened about three weeks ago and uh, the victim was shot right here on the right shoulder, exited right here. He is alive. Uh, he already had surgery and right now he's going through the recovery process. Uh, he has been keeping everybody up to date with his uh, recovery and how the injury was. Um, from what I've read online uh, is that he, he was hit here and it looked okay guys from what I've seen from the pictures from the outside until they did surgery. When they did surgery uh, from his description was uh, the doctor said that uh, the bone structure in this area here was blown to dust. So they ended up having to go into his shin like right below the knee and remove some bone and reconstruct the bone structure that was destroyed here also with uh, synthetic so uh, it, it's pretty severe you know um, uh, I don't know if it was a full metal jacket or a hollow point uh, but that's where he was hit uh, this could have been tragic uh, if it was any further to the left uh, or even hitting a main artery I mean it, it, it would have been a really really uh, ugly situation and it is an ugly situation um, but he is on his road to recovery right now and I just want to say if he's watching this I just want to say thank you for sharing your story uh, because it takes a lot for somebody to share that it happens a lot it happens every year in a, in, in a state of Texas it happens nationwide uh, hunting with a hunting accident and uh, a lot of people just don't want to share or even talk about it so I, I knew it took a lot for you to do that and I just want to say thank you because uh, people need to see this and people need to learn from it as well. So my buddy Cable, uh, Cable Smith, Lone Star Outdoor Show on Instagram and Facebook and I'm sure he's got other platforms out there. He shared it. Me and him talked before he shared it and uh, I commented. Uh, I didn't share it on my page. Uh, I didn't want to get into this and I didn't want to turn it into a bashing uh, post you know how stuff is when you post stuff online, but I did comment and I want you guys to hear what I said here I've been all I've been called all kinds of names for not taking folks out and this right here is why my circle stays small The thermal industry is growing fast and with that growth We have a lot of folks that think they know what they're doing You can have 20 years experience hunting with firearms But if you if you've never if you've never hunted at night, you're in for a real treat a lot can go wrong, especially when you get ready, when you get re uh, greedy on a group of pigs. Keep the person next to you close and know when to shut it down. This isn't a freak accident. This is pure negligence, and I hope everyone learns from it. I know I did. And I meant everything I said in that. And guys, when this was first shared, I heard freak accident. That's what I read. This is no freak accident. This is pure greed. This is pure negligence. An accident is when your rifle is in the back of the buggy, it falls, it discharges. An accident is a rifle that's safety's off, accidental discharge. Those are all accidents. We, we can come up with different scenarios for accidents. But when you're behind a rifle and you're pulling the trigger and you know you have somebody to the left or right of you and you're swinging your rifle tracking hogs, and you keep swinging until you shoot somebody, that's not an accident. That's pure negligence. 
So I got my rig over here. Uh, you guys haven't seen this yet. This is a new rig that I just put together. It's an 18-inch 223. Um, if you guys have any interest in this, I've talked about it on IG. Uh, if you have interest in seeing this and seeing what it's all about, uh, I will talk about it here in one of the videos coming up. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to move this rig, uh, probably just scoot it up and show you guys what happens when you're swinging on a group of pigs. And I can easily see how this can happen when your mind is just full of greed. Uh, we can have three pigs in front of us. You can have 15 plus pigs in front of you. And if you're not on the same page with the guys that are on your left and your right hand side, an accident's going to happen and it's not going to be good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my rifle up here. I've talked about this already on, on YouTube, uh, videos under situational awareness. I'm going to bring my rig up here and I'm going to show you guys exactly how this happened because just looking from the video that I've seen, it, it, it tells it all. It, it tells it all. So uh, let me get this set up. I'll scoot it up. We'll get the rig focused, uh, camera focused here, and uh, I'll show you guys exactly what I think happened. All right. So kind of sitting in a little hole here, so it looks like the rifle's sitting up too high for me. But anyways, <clears throat> let's just say I'm the guy in the middle, okay? You have a guy on your right-hand side. You have a guy on your left-hand side. Number one rule is keep these guys as close as possible, okay? That's going to keep you from swinging on to the, to the guy next to you and, two, communication. I've seen several, I've been on several hunts and I've seen several hunts where people just refuse to get next to you. They want to be five, six foot away from you and that's just too much space in between us because anything can happen in between that big ass space that we have. All right, so we got pigs in front of us. Pigs start running to the left. I'm in the middle. Boom, 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 we're shooting. Boom, boom, boom. And in my last video that I've done on this, situational awareness, I've talked about the tripod legs. If you're already going past the, the right side of your tripod leg, you don't went too far. So I'll shoot, 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 come a little bit over here, about 45 degrees, and I'll shut it down. And a lot of people flip out of my video sometimes. Man, you could have mowed them down. You could have killed a lot more. Why did you stop? You don't even know what's going on. You don't know who's left of me. You don't know what's going on over to the left of me. You have no idea. I shut it down for a reason. Now, this guy over here to the left, he has every right to keep panning as much as he wants. And that's exactly what happened to the guy that got hit. He was doing all the panning because he was on the left-hand side. The guy in the middle or the guy to the right of him was the guy that kept swinging. So you're going to see the video. He's going to keep swinging, swinging. He's shooting. He has every right to keep swinging and keep shooting. But the guy that was on his right-hand side, the guy that shot him, was doing the exact same thing and hit him right in the shoulder. That's exactly what happened. So it just, it just sucks. I don't know if this guy on the right had moved or he just, he just swung way too far. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of stuff online, especially Facebook, that's being screenshot and sent to me. This guy is being a complete asshole about the situation and has said publicly that the guy that got shot was in his way. That's where it's at right now, and I don't want to get in depth with that, but that's where it's at right now. Same situation if the pigs run off to the right. So if the pigs start running off to my right, the guy over here on the right-hand side has every right to keep swinging on these pigs. Now, if I don't have anybody on my right, I can swing as far as I want, and the guy to the left needs to either communicate with me and let me know that he's moving, or he needs to shut it down. It's plain and simple. Oh my god. Are you good? Oh my god. Yeah, no, call the ambulance. Oh my god. What the fuck? Bro, call the ambulance yeah, now. I don't got my phone. Oh my god, you okay? Call the ambulance. What the fuck? Oh my god. Do you know what a tourniquet? Call the ambulance. Nah, damn. Oh, on the Keep pressure on it.
Where'd it hit you? In the shoulder. We gotta find out where we're at. Sit down, sit down. See what I'm saying with that video? It was, it's pretty obvious what happened. The guy on the right hand side was swinging way too much and hit him right there in that shoulder. Uh, and again, he is extremely lucky that that's where he got hit because that was, uh, that, that's just a scary situation, guys. Uh, I'm also gonna share another clip with this same exact rig. Uh, I was with Chris, uh, Chris Robinson from Night Crew. We came up on a dozen pigs, uh, we killed eight, and we, we, we hunt together, we've been hunting together for quite some time now, not for a really long time, but long enough to be comfortable around each other. And this is the same way I hunt with all my friends. I have a small circle and they know exactly how I roll. We, got, we came up on these pigs, Chris had, we were both, me and Chris were both shoulder to shoulder on a group that was east of us. But when I looked over with my nods, I'm, I'm running my dual RH25 micros on my helmet. I looked over, there was another group to the right of me, like crazy close, like 45, 50 yards. So I moved my rifle and I was facing south now. Chris stayed east. So we were standing like this. Chris was cool with it. I was cool with it. We're getting ready for this countdown. Three, two, boom. I mowed down three right in front of me. The third one took a few shots, a few misses as well. But as soon as I got done with that, I got off the rifle, I shut it down. I didn't keep swinging because I knew there was pigs to the left, but I didn't swing over there. I left my rifle exactly where it was on safe. I flipped down my nods, I'm scanning. Chris is right here shooting. I'm looking, more pigs to the north of us. The group that was over here ended up running north. So I tell Chris, I'm moving behind you. I grabbed my rifle and I turned the opposite way with this muzzle up in the air, safety on, and now we're shoulder to shoulder. We're, his right hand shoulder, uh, my right shoulder is on his left shoulder and we were both taking shots at some pigs behind us and we ended up killing like three more pigs uh, behind us. So uh, we ended up killing like eight out of, that, out of that dozen and we did it safely. We did it communicating and we did it with a good countdown. A lot of folks don't do this. A lot of folks don't do this, and this doesn't happen overnight, and this doesn't happen with somebody that you just invited. Uh, you got to communicate, and you got to get a, a game plan down so you guys can go home at the end of the night alive, okay? I can't stress it anymore. Uh, in, in that comment that I talked about, 20 years plus experience, guys, you, you will be blown away by the DMs and the messages I get from folks. Hey, man, I was in the service for 25 years. Hey, I was a cop for eight years. Hey, man, I was a medic. Hey, you know, I just came back from Afghanistan. All this, I hear everything. I still don't trust you. I still don't know you. You have no experience with what we're doing. It's, it's totally different. I'm not saying I'm a professional. I'm not saying you're not a professional. I'm just saying you don't know how we do things. And a lot of people have a hard time understanding that. Get your ego put to the side and try to figure out the right, way, the right way of doing this so we can all be safe. A lot of people have a hard time putting their ego to the side and that shit is getting old. You know, this isn't, this isn't about uh, uh, clout chasing. This isn't about, hey man, I'm gonna be the best content creator. Hey man, we're gonna get a big pile of pigs over here for IG. Uh, you, you guys gotta stop that shit. It, it has to stop. Try to be professional. Try to have a good time and try to be safe about this because guys, at the end of the day, we are out here with live firearms and with human beings standing right next to us and it will not take much. I, I, cannot, I can share horror stories for days. I've been doing this for almost 20 years and I'm gonna tell you right now, I done seen it all and I'm still seeing new things pop up. And it, it took a lot of courage for that guy to share this, man. And I, again, I'm glad he did because it's a learning experience for us all. But I hope that a lot of you guys that watch us that never done this before understand why we don't just bring anybody out here. I, I couldn't, man, guys, just not too long ago we had a guy come down we, I invited him down to come hog hunting. It was me on the left-hand side, he was in the middle, and Estian was on the right-hand side. We're standing there in front of like maybe three or four pigs, I couldn't remember, and 
before we even shoot, I'm still looking around with my nods. So I'm looking around with my thermals and I'm looking and I look over and Esty is like, are you ready? And I'm like, no. The guy that I had invited down, the guy in the middle, his barrel was pointed 45 degrees off to the left on a group of cows. I grabbed his rail and I pushed it over and I said, the pigs are right there. <laughs> I mean, guys, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And sometimes the new guys are the safer guys because they're really worried about that. It's the folks that's been doing this for so long, again, ego-driven, that get so comfortable they get caught up in their own little world, man, and the, the accidents happen. There's just no room for that, guys. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy that got shot, and you don't want to be the guy that did the shooting, okay? Because this guy that did that shit, that shot this other guy, just from what I'm seeing, he is being a complete asshole. And what goes around comes around is all I got to say. What goes around comes around. He's going to end up disappearing really quick. His name's already out there. Everybody's already talking about it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sit there and publicly, you know, bash this guy and put the information out there. You know who he is. And it just gets me boiling over the top, man, because if anybody, if anybody got injured from a mistake that I made, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to do everything I can to help you out. And from what I'm seeing, that's not happening. Um, it's total bullshit. I'm coming behind you, Chris. I'm right behind you. There's a group right here. I was squeezing on that one. <laughs> Dude, I think we got at least six or seven. You guys just seen that clip there with me and Chris, and you heard me communicating with him. Uh, again, we killed eight out of 12. I thought that was pretty good. We communicated, and we were safe, all right? And that's what it's all about is communication and being safe. And then anything after that, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So we had a good time, and it's always like that. We're always communicating. We didn't do that because of what just happened. We've been doing it. We've been doing it. Uh, another thing I didn't talk about, and I want to talk about this really quick, is um, – the legal side of this. Uh, this could get pretty damn ugly. I don't know. I'm not going to get involved and um, I hope it doesn't go that far, but it, it can easily go that way. So let's just say, for example, on this property, okay, I invite you out. I invited you to come out and go hunting with me and something happens to you. You break your leg, you get shot in the leg, uh, whatever. You get injured. Now, I'm thinking that this is just between me and you. All right, and you go home, you get yourself taken care of, you go to the doctor or whatever, you go to the hospital first, and then you go home and you get this big old bill. And it's probably sixty, eighty thousand dollars. We just throw it out there, right? Man, this is way more than I can afford. I can't take care of this. I'm gonna do everything I can to help you out. Well, let's just say I don't wanna do that. Let's just say I'm gonna be an asshole and I'm not gonna help you out with your bills. Now, guess where you can go? You can go to an attorney. And that attorney's gonna come after the landowner. And although I have permission to be on this property, although I, I gave you permission to come out here with me, legally, you can go after the landowner. And this right here is a perfect example of why a lot of landowners don't want you calling them up on Onyx and saying, hey, I've been hunting for 15 years, blah, 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 and I got thermals, and I, you know, I'm a professional, and I could, They've already probably heard stories like this or they've already been down this road. 
And that's how easy everything can get screwed up, especially legally. And uh, I hope it doesn't go there with these guys, but uh, I'm going to tell you right now, man, if, if something happened to me like that and, and that guy wasn't there for me or trying to help me out, we're going to have some fucking problems legally. I can tell you that right now. Uh, that's an ugly situation. Uh, but anyways, guys, I hope we all learned something from this. And uh, I wish that guy a speedy recovery, and I hope he can get back out and start hog hunting again. Uh, but we somebody had to talk about this, man. This was just, this was just it's ugly. Just an ugly situation. Man, three weeks ago, and it still has me angry. Anyways, uh, guys. We got my rig over here. Again, if you guys are interested in it, please comment, hit that thumbs up, and uh, let me know what you think, and we'll probably get this going. I know a lot of people are curious about what what's up with the 1280 Amity team. We're gonna talk about that 1280 here pretty soon. Uh, I'm trying to get like a little highlight reel together for you guys, and then we'll get in depth and start talking about it as well. Uh, I'm just, I'm just stoked about that. It's a pretty cool setup. It's going to be expensive as hell. So if you want to bitch about price, go ahead and bitch because I already know it's expensive, but I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll talk about this one here next. I'm probably going to take this out tonight with Estian, and uh, we'll rock it for a little bit and uh, get you guys some feedback on that, and then we'll go over to the 1280. Guys, be careful out there. Again, keep your circle small. Be careful with who you're hunting with, and be safe out there.